Wells Fargo moves ahead and closes multiple accounts claiming high risk. The time to prepare was six months ago. It was a year ago. It was two years ago. It was 10 years ago. Well, if you haven't prepared already, you may want to start preparing right now. I have discussed broad topics such as the ever-changing structure of the economy and the challenges of conducting monetary policy under high uncertainty. Today, my remarks will be shorter, my focus narrower, and my message more direct. Now, if you've been following the channel for any length of time, we've been discussing what we've seen in the past. We've been discussing what we've been seeing unfold in front of our very eyes. Layoffs, inflation, recession, more and more Americans living paycheck to paycheck, unable to uh, cover unexpected expenses. We've seen the EBT SNAP benefits uh, program essentially leave customers just sitting at grocery store registers, unable to check out and pay for their food for their family. But what we're seeing today is arguably even worse, and this could be a more of a widespread issue, maybe a little bit too early to call it, but I do want to share some details with you so that you and your family can better prepare. Now, Wells Fargo moves ahead and closes multiple accounts claiming high risk. Now, we've talked about this. We've talked about uh, storing cash, stockpiling cash, not using credit cards as an emergency fund. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, uh, you may remember in a previous video where I discussed what happened to me when I relied on credit cards as my emergency fund. I don't know about you guys, but when I grew up, uh, I was taught that credit cards should only be used in an emergency. And so when you hear uh, quotes and recommendations and financial advice like that, and of course, this is not financial advice, but I have received financial advice that told me that a credit card, such as a Visa, MasterCard, uh, American Express, Discover Card, those were to be used for emergencies. Now, Many people will use it for any other, you know, many different types of purchases, uh, whether it's luxury items or emergencies or just day to day items to earn credit card reward points. But I'll go into why specifically credit cards were the worst decision that I could have ever made and potentially anyone could ever make uh, when using credit cards as an emergency fund. But going into the details of what we're seeing here, this goes further into why we all need to have cash. We need to have some form of cash because banks, they're in control more than you know. And the more that we move towards central bank digital currencies, the more that this could be a huge problem. Wells Fargo is closing bank accounts. They are closing these bank accounts that they're deeming to be quote unquote high risk. Now over the weekend, Rolling Stone broke the news that a half a dozen of Wells Fargo's bank's clients had their bank accounts literally, you know, canceled with no previous warning. Can you imagine uh, pulling up to a gas station? You're already on E. You need to fill up your gas tank and you swipe your debit card and all of a sudden Wells Fargo declines your debit card due to your account having been closed without any type of prior warning. What if you were in, in line at grocery stores such as Walmart, Target, Costco? A huge line is behind you. You've got a grocery cart full of food. You're stocking up your pantry. You're filling up your, your grocery, uh, your, your refrigerator. You're getting your kids prepared for the week. And you go to swipe your card after ringing up all these items. And all of a sudden, you get a big old decline because Wells Fargo shut down your bank account without any type of prior notice because you were labeled as a quote unquote high risk. Is this fair? Now, even beyond what's fair, are you prepared? Do you have a backup plan to circumvent finding yourself, potentially finding yourself in a situation where a Wells Fargo or any other bank for that matter uh, shuts your account down? Could you survive a uh, interruption in your income? It doesn't have to necessarily be a Wells Fargo bank closure. It could be your income, um, you know, with layoffs going around. We're expecting more and more layoffs with the impending recession. Bed Bath & Beyond has already reported that they're shutting down 150 stores. We've already received reports from many different S&P 500 companies that 
are reporting that they're laying people off. Shopify, for example, they're laying off roughly 10% of their workforce, if I remember correctly. Coinbase, uh, Redfin, there have been a number of different companies already reporting layoffs, and this number is not set to, uh, to be slowing down anytime soon especially with the recent warning from Fed Chair Jerome Powell regarding the impending increases at rather alarming rates of federal interest rate hikes to attempt to offset the, uh, the rate of inflation that we've been dealing with. Fed Chair Jerome Powell spoke recently at Jackson Hole and pretty much said, hey, Americans will feel the pain and that the job market, the labor market may soften. The burdens of high inflation fall heaviest on those who are least able to bear them. Restoring price stability will take some time and requires using our tools forcefully to bring demand and supply into better balance. Reducing inflation is likely to require a sustained period of below trend growth. Moreover, there will very likely be some softening of labor market conditions. While higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. These are the unfortunate costs of reducing inflation. But a failure to restore price stability would mean far greater pain. Well, we've already heard previously that inflation was transitory and we've been dealing with inflation for at least the last two years. And not just the standard 2% rate of inflation that the Federal Reserve targets, but significantly higher levels of inflation pushing more and more families to be on the brink of even being able to survive and stay in their home and to avoid homelessness. As rent prices continue to rise, as interest rates continue to rise, and mortgage rates continue to increase, making it more and more difficult to qualify and purchase a home. And so when those homeowners can't purchase homes, they remain renters. And so that drives up the demand for rent, and it just makes it even more and more difficult to afford staying in your place of residence. Now, over the weekend, Rolling Stone, they broke the news that, you know, half a dozen of the bank's clients had their banking accounts with Wells Fargo canceled with no previous warning. Now, in 2014, Chase Bank unceremoniously closed down several bank accounts with no explanation or warning. Now, this is rather concerning. Could this be a sign that banks are weaker than we expect? Could we see another uh, a repeat of the 2008 financial collapse that we've seen prior? I mean, uh, here we are seeing a tremendous slowdown in the rate of home sales. The sales volume of real estate and even if you're not looking to buy a house, even if you're not a homeowner or anything like that, this affects everyone. If you live here in the United States, you are affected. If you are a renter, you're more so affected because every person, every homeowner, every mortgage applicant who gets denied creates more competition. Every mortgage application that gets denied is yet another competitor for you because they will be hitting the rental market. Real estate investors are sitting on the sidelines waiting for people to just fold and not be able to make their mortgage payments. And so now the real question is, what exactly is high risk in the eyes of banks? Not just Wells Fargo, it could be Bank of America, it could be Chase, it could be uh, JP Morgan Chase Bank, it could be PNC Bank, it could be Truist Bank, it could be PNC Bank. So what is this high risk? What really makes a bank account holder considered as high risk? And this is the question that we really need to understand because we don't want to sit around and be vulnerable to potential bank closures and having our bank accounts shut down. But, you know, I'm going to leave the comments wide open for you guys. Drop me some comments. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Are you prepared? Are you prepared for a bank account shutdown? Are you prepared for more bank branches shutting down? You can check my previous videos. I've been at different Bank of America locations that have been shut down. And we're moving more and more towards automation. You're seeing branches that are open with only one person working the branch. In fact, Kevin recently uh, filmed that a bank branch that had no physical human beings working inside of the branch. It was literally 100% automated. And at best, you might be able to pick up a phone 
and you know somewhere off in the distant, uh, maybe even maybe even uh, in a different country, someone's answering the phone and remotely assisting you. So we're moving away from human to human interaction, and we're moving more and more towards this uh, fully automated society. And these bank closures just pretty much move us one notch closer to their ultimate goal. Are you prepared? 